Hey everyone, Christian here and in my hands I hold the Minis Forum BD770i, a mini IDX mainboard that comes with a powerful pre-installed AMD Ryzen CPU, a passive cooler, two NVMe slots, 2.5 gigabit ethernet on board and I know what you're thinking right now because I was actually thinking the same. Could this be the perfect home server mainboard? That's what I've tried to find out the last days. And what I can tell you from my first impressions is this mainboard here is absolutely amazing for us home lab nerds. It has so much power, but it is still totally silent and also very power efficient. Honestly, I believe this could be such a great choice for any type of home server build. Yeah, No matter if you just need a small power efficient device for running a couple of self hosted applications, or maybe you want to build a powerful computing server that can run several virtual machines, this baby here can handle it all. And it also does that for a very fair price. You can buy this for $399 right now. But uh, let us go through all of these stats one by one. I will tell you my opinion about it and what I'm planning to do with this because I have a very cool project in mind. You're going to see it the next weeks. But before we start with the Minis Forum mainboard, I quickly want to talk about Type AI, a chat GPT powered iOS keyboard. And this is such a useful application I'm using on my iPhone and on my iPad as well. As you should know, I often have to write text in English, but since it is not my mother language, sometimes I just need to use an AI assistant for grammar and spell checking or finding out how to correctly express myself. Of course, it also works with any other language like German too, but it is really amazing for translation as well as wording recommendations and auto-completion of text that it generates in real time. You can also chat with the AI, change the tone of a text, all those cool AI features you probably know from ChatGPT. But the cool thing about Type AI is that it seamlessly integrates into any of your apps on your phone without having to copy and paste stuff around different applications. So do me a favor, check it out, click the link in the description box below for a free trial of Type AI Premium version and find out whether it's going to be useful to you too. And now without any further talking, let's check out the Minis for ROM BD770i. Some of you might wonder, wait a second, Minis Forum, they now make mainboards? Because Minis Forum is a manufacturer that is probably a bit more well known for making smaller computers such as mini PCs, probably a bit more desktop and gaming focused. I personally never heard of this brand before, but because they just recently added two very exciting mainboard products on their homepage, they really caught my attention here. So they currently have two models around. This is the Minis Forum BD770i. That is what we're reviewing in this video. It also comes in a bigger version, the BD790i. Both are AMD Ryzen CPU based. And they also have the Minis Forum AR900i, which is an Intel based mainboard, which probably has a bit more performance, but it's also a bit more expensive. Just to get it right out of the way, this video is not sponsored by Minis Forum in any way. I totally paid for this product myself because I wanted to test it and I want to work on a new home lab project with it. So just in case anyone is confused here. <laughs> but you can definitely see why this product caught my attention. Because if we take a closer look at the stats here, you can see that the BD770i comes with an AMD Ryzen 7 CPU, more specifically the 7745HX, which is actually more a laptop CPU CPU that comes with 8 cores and 16 threads and the bigger model even features a more powerful uh, CPU, the 7945HX. This is a pretty powerful machine and because laptop based CPUs are usually built with a more power efficiency focus in mind, I was really excited to see so how well it performs and how much power it consumes, especially when it's on idle, which is very important for us home lab people. But also apart from the CPU, all the other components and interfaces are also very much high-end. As you can see, it is completely PCI 5.0 ready. It has a full X16 slot to put in a graphics card or any additional PCIe controller card for storage or networking. It has two NVMe slots, also both PCI 5. And it even comes with a network interface that has 2.5 gigabit ethernet on board. It even has a Wi-Fi card built in, so it comes with an external Wi-Fi antenna. It's also pretty amazing. And also USB 3.2 on board, HDMI, DisplayPort, USB-C, what you would typically expect from a modern mainboard. 
The entire test setup that I've used consists of the Mies Forum mainboard, of course, two DDR5 SOD memory modules from Crucial, each has 16 GB, so I've got 32 GB in total, a 1 TB NVMe drive for storage, which is the Crucial P3. Actually, I also wanted to test it with a dual 10 gigabit SFP plus PCIe network card, but yeah, I haven't done that yet. Maybe I'll do that next week. Uh, one thing that I just recently bought, especially just for this one project, was this open air bench frame where you can mount any ITX size mainboard together with a regular PSU, which I've got from Be Quiet, by the way. And the reason why I've got this additional frame was I wanted to test this mainboard without having to put it in a real computer case because when you like to change something in a test setup, you don't want to get it in and out of the case all the time. Yeah, I I'm a lazy dude. I know this. Don't tell me. <laughs> But yeah, this probably was the best decision that I've made because with this ITX mainboard frame, it is super simple and easy to test and try out new computer components. Of course, you need to assemble it first, but it is very well described in the manual what you have to do. By the way, if you want to have a full list of all the components I've used for this build or you generally want to find out what else I'm running in my home lab, then check out my kit page. So here you will find everything from the ITX mainboard frame that I'm using for testing this, as well as the Minis Forum BD770i, as well as all the other components. And you get direct links to buy it on Amazon or any other shops. So check out my kit page, follow me there, you will find a link in the description down below. But yeah, that's how I've tested this mainboard. As for the operating system, I probably went a completely different route than you would expect because I've installed the Proxmox ISO on this mainboard, which is a Debian-based Linux distro with the Proxmox virtual environment that I'm using to run all my virtual machines in my home lab. You know this pretty well, I suppose, but one might ask, so why did I even run this instead of a Windows or another Linux distro? Well, the simple reason is because I'm going to install a new Proxmox setup next week. So I'm aiming to reunite this Minis Forum server here with my current Proxmox server as a secondary node. And I was hoping that the Minis Forum would be a bit more power efficient than my current server. So I could easily just run this here 24 seven while only turning on the secondary node when I really need it. That's the whole reason why I'm doing it in the first place. But of course, there are also some other benefits to this choice as Proxmox doesn't have a graphical user interface, so hence the performance testing should be pretty much accurate and more realistic to if you really want to use it as a home server. It wouldn't make much sense to test it with another system that is not Linux or has a desktop, right? The only problem I got with this was that I had an issue with the internal Wi-Fi network card of the Minis Forum on Proxmox because Proxmox thought first that the Wi-Fi card would be the primary network adapter and for some reason it couldn't bring up the interface as the Wi-Fi adapter was the only member of the virtual bridge interface. So I needed to change this manually in the CLI in the network configuration files of Proxmox it wasn't a big deal, but yeah, that gave me a bit of a headache once I tried to connect it to my network. But apart from this problem, Proxmox runs incredibly well on this hardware. It is super fast and I was really excited about the performance testing. Now, the next question though was, how do I do those performance tests? Honestly, I'm not really good at hardware reviews. Yeah, I don't know any of those tools or programs that typical review channels use to measure performance or anything like this, but it turned out it is super simple, even on Linux. <laughs> First, I've executed the PVE perf command, which is a Proxmox utility to do a very rough performance test. From what I've read, it is not super meaningful what you get out, but it can give you some interesting metrics such as the CPO BOGO MIPS, which is a simple benchmark used in the Linux kernel, or the regular expressions per second, which indicates the performance a little. Now, these stats were surprisingly pretty similar on the Minis forum from what I've seen on my current Proxmox server. So next I wanted to know uh, what are the stats for commonly used performance benchmarking tools such as Geekbench. And since Proxmox is actually just a Debian based Linux distro, you can very easily install any additional program on the CLI such as Geekbench as well. And this for example here is the Geekbench result of the Minis forum. As you can see those numbers are very close to what we have seen on their homepage. Since I didn't use Geekbench before to be honest, I had no idea what those numbers mean. But because they are very much close to what we have seen on the homepage, I was expecting to see those results. So I guess I've done the test right. 
And of course, I wanted to know what the stats mean in comparison to my current Proxmox server. So I've simply just executed Geekbench on my current system as well, which is an Intel Core i7-12700 with 12 cores and 20 threads. So you should actually expect a bit higher stats but surprisingly, as you can see, the single core performance is even lower. Though it really didn't make much of a difference here compared to the AMD Ryzen on the Minis forum. And that did surprise me. No, I knew that the Intel i7 wasn't the fastest CPU anyway, but to see it fall behind against an eight core and 16 threads laptop CPU from AMD, that is indeed pretty impressive. I mean, for the AMD, of course. <laughs> Uh, but that tells me that this Minis Forum mainboard can totally run anything you throw at it, yeah? If you want to run 10, 20 virtual machines all at the same time on this thing, no problem. However, the higher the Geekbench score, that doesn't necessarily mean the better the home server. Because as you might know, in a home lab, we usually tend to run our systems all day, all night. So they are always turned on and do something, but not necessarily high CPU intensive tasks. So the more interesting question for me was, if the performance on this Minis Forum AMD CPU is so close to my Intel CPU on my current system, would it then have a similar power consumption? Because my Intel 12700 consumes somewhat around 40 watts on idle, which is not bad, but it can go high over 100 watts when it is really under full load. Would that be the same on the Minis Forum with the AMD 7745, a powerful laptop CPU? Since laptop CPUs tend to be a bit more power efficient than regular desktop CPUs, I was super interested in this metric. And I can tell you, I was really surprised to see that the Minis Forum with that exact configuration I've got consumes around 16 to 17 watts on idle, which is super low. I mean, this is similar to like three Raspberry Pis or three Zima boards. But of course, this CPU is much, much faster than any of those smaller machines. I've also done a stress test on all 16 CPU threads with a program on Proxmox called Stress. And when the CPU is under heavy load, so it's really at 100% busy, it first boosts up to 110 watts, but then it goes down to about 85, 86 where it stayed until I turned off the stress test. And then it went immediately back down to the idle power consumption of 16, 17 watts. So as a conclusion, if I really compare this Minis Forum that I originally bought just because I wanted to have a smaller, not so power hungry machine to my current Intel CPU based Proxmox, it is not only much, much more power efficient, no, it is also equally fast. <laughs> And that probably should answer your question if this is really the perfect mainboard for a new home server. In my opinion, absolutely. Because you get a very powerful mainboard with all the modern interfaces that is completely silent for a very fair price. And there are just a few things that I wish this thing would have. First, additional SATA ports or maybe a secondary PCIe slot so I could really use this for storage server builds or just generally increase the storage on the device. However, I've also seen it could be possible if you're not really using the NVMe cooler, you could also add an NVMe to SATA controller port and then you could in theory, use the first NVMe slot for an internal drive and the secondary one for connecting additional SATA drives. Of course, I also want to test the 10 gigabit SFP plus network card on this device in the future and what it means in terms of power consumption. But all that, I will let you know once I got this thing into my new server case and connected it as an additional node to my new Proxbox cluster. Oh guys, I really can't wait to play around with all of this. I'm super excited about it. But yeah, that's it about the Minis Forum. So please tell me what do you think about this device? Would you want to see future test videos from me like this? Really, I want to know because I think I'm a terrible reviewer. I'm not that good when it comes to hardware stuff in IT actually. But maybe you find this super valuable. So just let me know and I might do future test videos. And as always, thanks everybody for watching. If you want to support my mission, creating all these free tutorials and tech videos for you, consider joining our community on Patreon. That would be super cool. And yeah, let's catch up next week. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye bye.